So basically, yeah. Right, so basically, yeah, we've got my guy Jamie Boyle here. Now, I'm just gonna say, like, this isn't the first time we've done this interview. It's just, uh, we did it before, but the files got corrupt on my SD card and it happens, you know what I mean? Like, it's happened to him with his yeah. writing. So, um, we've gone back here. Big um, appreciation for him coming down. And he brought Paul with him, so big thank you for that. Pleasure, uh, Thank you for everything you've been doing for no, me. No you know, we help each other. That's what I love about these <laughs> ideas. It's been amazing. Everyone's been welcoming. And there's a lot of talent around here. And anyway, let's get started with the video. But like last time, before we get started, we'll give you a go about trying to pronounce the name, you know. Right, so it's Zuckapano to Garapasi Panze. Zuckapara Pura Pura Panze. No, no, no. That, you know, we'll just skip that. No one's going to get it. No one's going to get it. Right. So yeah, Jamie Boyle, book writer, author. Tell us a little bit about yourself. <clears throat> right. I am um, a childhood friend of mine in 2012. Summer 2012 of July, he said to me, when you get a minute, uh, type in Paul Sykes Wakefield on YouTube. So I did that. Name never meant nothing to me. Watched it. Watched it again. Became obsessed with it. <clears throat> Wanted to know what happened to him. So I watched, you know, kind of, basically, long story short, read his best-selling book, watched his documentary, and I wanted to know what happened to him. This was five years after his death, he died, 2007. So I wanted to know what happened to him so much for about three years that from 2015, I thought I'd been reading. I thought, you know what? So basically, long story short, I walked into the story, walked into the book, the documentary, and he done the first book. I did the second and the third. Them three books have been signed to be a film by Western Edge Pictures. Um, and become a best-selling author, and it was like, I'd only done it purely out of, I don't know, <laughs> probably being a bit weird, but um, if I'd never watched that documentary, I would have never, ever written a book, and obviously I've done like, uh, three, 13 books in just less than three years now, probably the most busiest author in Britain. Um, Steve Rave said to me, he said, that's actually some record that, Jimmy, you want to Google that, because I was watching... <clears throat> I was watching a documentary the the other month I was with Ben and Mahoney, the Essex Boys, and he was like, I've done 15 books in 13 years. And I sat and thought, I've done nine in two and a half. Do you know what I mean? So and six of them have been bestsellers, you know. But um, that's how it started. So basically, Alberto, if I never watched that documentary in 2012, I wouldn't. I mean, I, my English has always been good, but I never thought I was off a level. And then I'd just become... Obsessed a bit like Steve Rafe started writing the craze and walked in and I've pretty much done the same and you know my publisher will often say to me, Oh Jamie Carragher bought, bought your book today or Jonathan Woodgate bought us, you know, Ricky Gervais, Robbie Williams. Um and all these I have a look on Amazon sometimes and all these like best selling authors and I think, Well, there's me number one and I'm just a guy who's winging it, taking the place. Um so that's how it started. Alright, so what was your so was the first book you ever wrote, the Paul Sykes? But the first one was, Paul Sykes' the first one was Sweet Agony. Mm -hmm. So I, <clears throat> I did Sykes' Unfinished Agony, and then I did Sykes' Fervor Agony. This year I'm going to do Sykes' Final Agony. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was basically, when I did them first, I don't think was going to do one. And then I come across people like, really, the notorious crime lord, Delroy Showers, who, uh, the guy married Paul, <clears throat> Paul Sykes on the documentary. Um... And i just come across a lot of more links and I thought, well, I'll do another book. And then when I did the two, they become bestsellers and I thought, well, what do I do now? And I was like, well, I kind of, you know, I did a, did a boxing book. Then, you know, um, the big one really, I suppose, has put me on the map. Well, Paul Sykes has because it's going to be a film starting in September. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things I can't really say, but there's like a big BBC star playing him. I've sent him my books, he's reading them at the minute, he's, he's a bit of a half rob, um, very well known <clears throat> in the, you know, all of the, the girls are known when it's announced. But um, it just kind of happened from there, but I was speaking to a guy um, from Middlesbrough on Paul Sykes, and, he, and I kind of, he was very close to Lee Duffy, he was, I won't mention his name, but he was, um, he was widely known as Lee Duffy's mentor, elderly gentleman in Middlesbrough. And I, I kind of half put it to him. I said, what do you reckon about a Lee Duffy book? Because obviously, a lot of people in Wakefield, I'm probably not their favourite person. But uh, it was a bit different, you know. I got a lot of abuse and trolls. But it's a bit different getting trolls 
from like 70 miles away or whatever, 60 miles away where no one knows you. I, I grew up in Middlesbrough for most of my life. And um, and he said to me, he said, well, I think it's a great idea. And I was like, no, no. And I spoke to a few of his family and they were like, no, no. And I, and I, I, spoke, you know, I spoke to his brother, God rest him. And he, he actually said to me, I'd rather you not do it, but... You know, and I, and I said, I said to the wife, I said, I can't do that. And she went, you can. Do you know why? Because someone else will do it. Um, and there's a lot. Of, I did it. You know, that that's been a bestseller. Um, the Hall of the Moon and the the Blood Moon. The Middlesbrough Water Zones has been here now 21 year, and that's the biggest book ever in the history of Middlesbrough by a local author. Mm -hmm. um, they said to me that <coughs> first book literally walked out the shop. You know, and it's like if you go in, um, you know, Middlesbrough Library. They have free copies and they've all been stolen. My publishers have had emails from Home House Prison saying uh, everyone's going nuts for Jamie Boyle books <laughs> and they're the most stolen books in the prison. <laughs> so it's just like, I can't believe this. She's telling me this. Like, well, my publishers, like, the she's surprised the thieves in there. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I actually said in like some seconds and books that were ripped and all that. Um, <clears throat> you know, but I, I do I take an awful, awful lot of stick. There's not a week that goes by that I don't get. Some 18, 19 year old, 10 stone kid saying, Meet me in the park for a fight. And the day after, I'll get some 65 year old saying, Oh, meet me for a fight and all this. And I just think that the first time I ever react, you know, I, I spent many years as a boxer, but the first time I ever react like that, I'm in the paper, I'm videoed on social media, my career's mm -hmm. over. So, as annoying as it is, as much as people abuse my wife, my kids, tell me to get, they're open like a cancer. I've just got to, do you know what I mean? You know yourself, you get trolled. And uh, I didn't realise, you know, social media in the 21st century is the devil. Mm. I didn't realise, I've got people now making fake profiles up five in the morning to tell me that I'm an asshole. And I'm like, I already knew. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But, uh, <laughs> but like, it's like, you know, it's like a proper... Some people really, you know, some of my mates are company, and a lot of people hate me, but they've never met me. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But not many people know this, but I've actually given like just about well, three and a half, nearly just under four grams worth of uh, charity money to stuff like the Bradley Larry Foundation, um, Middlesbrough Cancer Ward, and you know all this kind of stuff. I'm not, I'm far from from rich. Do you know what I mean? And you know, and I don't have to do that. And one of the biggest shockers is I quite often. Uh, Oscar Wilde said there's only one thing worse than talked about and that's not being talked about and I sometimes I look at someone and they're writing comments to me and this one day like when I'm in the Gazette I've been the I've been the local paper 11 times in under three years mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> the Gazette said to me that I caused a lot of, a lot of controversy but the law has put me in because when you look at the Teesside Live and you look at it's been like viewed by 89,000 people or oh, that Jamie Boyle can't stand him you know, oh, he's all right, he's a good guy. But um, there was one last year, I think it was a Lee Duffy documentary, and there was about 350 comments, and I was looking down, and uh, there was about 250 of them were bad. But this this is all, like, by heroin dealers and crack cocaine dealers all slagging me off. The lowest mm. to the fucking low. I'm doing books, you know, work seven days a week, provide my charity, and you've got complete low lives, ruin society, having the audacity to look down on me, it defies belief. But... You know, as my wife says, if you know, sometimes we're all human, and you know, when you I get a complex about my weight, sometimes I'm not quite fly with it anymore. But uh, and she said, "Well, go get a job in court, then go stack shells in Morrison's or something." So anything in life worth doing doesn't come easy. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's like people think if you write books, there's a lot much stacks of money, and there is if you get the right ones, but. You know, there's two ways you can make money. One, you get dramatised and there's sound to be a film like my first two. <clears throat> um, or two, write a lot of books. And, and I write a lot of books. Do you know what I mean? It's like when one's dying away, you know, Brian Cockrell's is, is on the verge of being out now. Uh, and when that's dying away, oof, there'll be another one. It's just a long line of conveyor belt because, you know, we're having friends around people like Steve Rafe, he's given me a lot of good compliments. Josh Warrington, James English. You know, and I, there's been days when I thought, oh, do you know what, I'm sick of this. And, you know, I come off social media and have a bit of a breakdown. And then, do you know what, that's their legacy, to be a troll. They're messaging me. I forgot how many times I was threatened with Brian Cockle before I actually became friends with him. You know, I'm getting threatened by fake accounts, Freddie Flintstone, um, 
Are you typing my name on the forums? I read stuff I don't even know. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, you know, I've read some unbelievable stuff about me, some monstrous things. And uh, <clears throat> I tracked one guy down, actually. And uh, I messaged him and I said, what's all that about? I said, you were... I said, you don't even know me though? And he was like, well, I've heard. And I was like, well, all right. And you just, you, some people are just, you can't reason with them. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's impossible. Yeah, you'll never please everyone. Absolutely not. not. It's, um, you know, it's, it is, it's hard sometimes. Um, but, you know, if any, anything in life, and I'll probably get it tomorrow, I'll get it next year. It's not going to go away. Um, you know, I, I'm an, I, I'm a, I still come up, people ask me for pictures sometimes, and I think, are you for real? You know, I'm, I'm in a complete nobody, mm. you know, and then I have people telling me they hate me and, you know, it is quite, because um, we're all only human and all these footballers have better. <clears throat> they, they grow up and they get taught in classes to, to, to deal with the women and the drugs and the gambler and the trolls. So it kind of come on me and all of a sudden I just exploded on the scene, got famous in Wakefield but it didn't matter because nobody knew me. And then it only kind of really hit home in Middlesbrough um, when everybody knew me and I read comments and I thought people liked me and I was like, whoa, and jealousy is the green-eyed monster, a lot of it, do you know what I mean? It's kind of, if anyone, I think Middlesbrough, as much as I like the players, it, it has a, this staff mentality that if anyone's kind of doing well or kind of, they just rip you down, do you know what I mean? It's, it is what it is, but uh, it's a part of the parcel of doing something what we do. Mm. Right, so obviously, like you've written the book. About, um, you want to write? Who did the? Is it, you my did my the, first two. Or, did you do the? What the lead of you on? You did. First two were Paul Sykes. Then I did a box of one called Tales of Pugilism. Mm -hmm. I did Lee Duffy. Then I did two Terry Dicko ones. Uh, I did a Roy Shaw one. Um, I'm doing the documentary in May with the Shaw family. Uh, Dominic Negus from Danny Dyer's Deadliest Men, boxer for Audley Harrison. Um, and also, I mean, they're, they're the ones that I've written. Um, so Brian, Brian Cockrell's. But also with like Paddy Maloney's, Marty Turner's, Bob and Dave's, which is a parody. Mm -hmm. I know you've discovered them, but you didn't quite actually know that's one of my books, did you? Yeah. Did you know the Bob and Dave? Where the, the, the kind of... Yeah, yeah, I saw the... They're, they're the really the kind of have this cult classic image now where they wear Slasinger... And, uh, you know, Dave comes on my house now and again and always ends up with Bob kicking off. And I seen them and uh, I was like, and anyway, he started talking about and he started writing a book. So I proofread it. I've written the forward for it. You know, Paddy's written his own book. Marty Turner written his own book. But I proofread it. Got the forward, Connie in his car. Brian Cockrell. So I, I not only do I write books, I publish them as well. Um, so, and I've ended up with like 13. I'm writing Steve Race at the minute, which is a guy from your neck mm. of the woods. Um Steve Rafe, he's just paid Floyd Mayweather a lot of money to come over to Newcastle. What else has he done? Um, he's been in films at Rise of the Foot Soldier. Um, he's um, promotion, boxing manager. There's nothing There's nothing that guy hasn't done, and I don't think his wife ever sees him. But he's been an inspiration to me. He's someone that I've sat from afar and thought, he's so professional in what he does. And, you know, and he gets the trolls, he's, mm -hmm. I was, two, three nights ago, I was reading, and um, obviously the Newcastle Sunderland thing, he gets a lot of abuse from people in Sunderland, um, as I do from Middlesbrough, but, you know, I grew up in Middlesbrough, at least Steve, actually, it's, you know, it's Sunderland people, he grew up there, but uh, I was reading some of the comments, you know, like, oh, you bald nonsense and all this, and, and I was like, but he's, he's given me, it's people like Steve Rafe, James English, Josh Warrington. They've took me aside and really spoke to me at length. And, you know, it's people like him who give me the strength to think, you know, because nothing comes easy in life. Do you know what I mean? Or we'd all be doing it. We'd all be like Floyd Mayweather's or Cristiano Ronaldo's. Um, I'm 39 now, and by the time I'm 45, I mean, you know, I'm I'm probably, I am the busiest um, writer in Britain at, at the minute. There's no one who's... Done it. And by the time I'm 45, I want to be like number one. I want to be like, as soon as you mentioned True Crime, Jamie mm -hmm. Boyle. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I, I do the books that probably nobody would do. Do you know? I've, I've just got that. Yeah, you know, people <laughs> saying, oh, you know, like not praising bad people, but you just write. Well, them. if anyone's read any of my 13 books, I don't, 
I don't glorify it. Um, Brian Cockrell's new one has, has come out. I'll give you a copy in a couple of sends out in the paperback. It's it come out and it's Brian. When I sat down with him, I said, "Look, you can do two ways. You can pretend you weren't on drugs, and we'll, we'll still, I'll still do the book, mm. or you can skate around the, the edges of houses." And with he went, "No, no, put my hands up." I was a fully fledged crackhead, you know. I was this, I was that, and and he's had twenty nine Amazon reviews in about a week, and every one has been five star. <clears throat> so the go up in half stars, so that's literally ten out of ten. Obviously, his first book, um, you know, it was uh, it was very different, and I, I wouldn't. It, it kind of almost, if anyone read Brian's book, it's common knowledge that it, you know it's all tax man fighting, fighting. Where if you read Brian's book, it jumps out of regret. You know, the guy should have been an Olympic level athlete, but he chose that wrong path. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of famous, he'd become infamous, he'd become notorious. But I've been around the last couple of months, five months, and been around in schools, you know, and all the, the schools are the bad schools in Thornaby. We won in Pardon the other week near Peter Lee. And when he walks in, all these kids who think it's cool to be the gangster and knives and drugs, it's like you, you think like, the Queen, the Pope had just walked in. Mm -hmm. These young kids are just like, wow. And, you know, he puts his, he, he, he's <laughs> foolishly put his phone number on social media. Um, <clears throat> Brian's a dinosaur. I don't think he knows quite knows what he's doing. But he didn't know anyway. And he, he started getting calls on a night by kids. It's just really Brian Cockrell. Do you know what I mean? So, but he's been in his talking to people about suicide. So if he never was that bad bastard 30 years ago, 25 years ago, they wouldn't have been the guy he is now. Mm -hmm. So I suppose it's kind of sw swung and roundabouts and, you know, it's, it's a lot to be learned from and he's, he's changed his ways. And, you know, that man, for what he knows and training and dietitian and discipline and it's staggering. You know, he goes to his doctors and his doctor will say, ask him about how do you do with this? And, you know, I know it's a controversial subject, but steroids, people, you know, people take steroids when you don't have grown until you're 22. People take them 19. Mm -hmm. And then when the human body's 30, it goes down by 1%. Um, you know, this is, I mean, this is what Brian just told me anyway. He said, when you look at athletes, like, you know, you never, you always look at an athlete, you never see a miserable athlete. And when you do, in the 60s, they look 45 because they looked after themselves, mm -hmm. you know, and, and he had so much to give. And obviously he chose the wrong path and the rest is history, but he, Better late than never, and he has turned his life around, and he's here now. Um, last week, four people in a week were stabbed in Teesside. Mm -hmm. In, was it 2018 or 2019? 2018, <clears throat> I was going to say last year, but now in 2020. Um, 15 people got a life sentence. So that made Britain, Teesside, sorry, Middlesbrough, um, the worst place for knife crime, pound for pound in Britain. Uh, and that's absolutely staggering. You know, and it's like... Brian now he's out there he's delivering a message. Mm -hmm. Any young footballers want to want to be the next Cristiano Ronaldo? There's, you know any young boxers Barry McGuigan, and you know people think it's cool to be this. You know Brian's been hit with everything that ends in the word bat, and you know if he has a drink you should see him. He's got stab wounds everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know he's been arrested for seven murders even when it wasn't him. Do you know what I mean? The police will just pull him in for it, and you know it's not glamorous at all. It's certainly not glamorous. You know some of the characters I've done, Lee Duffy. He would have been 54. He's got kids. He had grandkids. Um, 54 is not even that old now, but he's pushing up. He's pushing up flowers in Essen Cemetery. Paul Sykes, you know, could have done everything. He was. He had O levels, A levels, degrees. He had an education teachers couldn't hold a torch to. But he ruined his life with drink and drugs and ended up a tramp on the street. All the kids, all the people he beat up, the kids used to walk beat on a daily basis because he was no longer this big 17 stone monster of a man, six foot three, he was a frail old man and the kids had walked past, smash eggs on him. Uh, 2004, well, there's a picture of him, I'll send you it later. <clears throat> He's got about eight quarter and he's living homeless and the kids set him on fire, poured light fluid. So was it social justice? Was it karma that comes swung around about life? Get you in the end. Mm. I did the Roy Shaw book, you know, that um, he had a bad ending. He, um, you know, I revealed it in the first book, and we're going to do the second book, Roy Shaw, The Unheard Tapes, four and a half hours, which I'm going to be with Gary Shaw in May. We're going to do the Roy Shaw documentary in May, but he really, um, he lost his marbles, and he was a multi, multi-millionaire, and uh, 
you know. So I think life does come back on you, you know. And um, Mother Teresa used to say, everything you do in life, it's never between you and the people out there, it's between you and God. Do you know what I mean? And it's, you know, so if you do good things, it comes back on you in many ways. And if you do bad, it will catch up with you in the end. So, like, what's the plan, like, for the future? Are you going to continue writing? Do um, you have any new people you want to look at? Or? Yeah, I, you know, it's like, I'll have a look on Twitter sometimes. And, you know, if you type in hashtag Jamie Boyle, there's, like, Tyson Fury, Ricky Hatton, the League of Gentlemen. Um, I have found some, I think, how the hell do you even know where I am? And, but I have, people see me walking about, interviewing people, making documentaries, but they don't see me locked away for 50 hours, 40 hours a week, mm. excuse me, in my bedroom typing, headphones on, phone off. Um, what I'm doing, just done Brian Cockrell's, going to do Steve Rafe's Every Boy's Dream, which is out in May the 31st. Um, you know, Steve's done a lot in his life, um, and he's a prime example of people's thing, connection with his, his crime and his boxes. Um... You know, football, Newcastle United, but that that guy is, you know, he hadn't, he never had the best education. He was, you know, by his own example, lacking as a school. He was kind of bullied as a bit for being thick, um, and everything he's got in life, he's really, really worked hard for. Um, he gets a lot of trolls, you know, um, but he's he's been a massive inspiration to me personally. Uh, what else am I doing? Um, I get offers for books every day, but I can't do them all. Some some days, you know, flop. There's a guy in prison inside the prison at the minute, <clears throat> Paul Bryan. He's doing shot three people, killed two. Uh, he's writing his own book. I'm going to publish that. He's good donating the full proceeds to um, the Army Foundation or something. Um, so he's not actually gaining a penny for it. Mm. You know, so that's the only reason why the prison have allowed him to do that. Um, but you know, there is sometimes there used to get to a point where you know I was talking to Steve the other day and I said, you know, of all the things I do, you know, it's always the true crime that brings the trolls and says, oh, Jamie Boyle's such a bad person. Where if I do the footballers or boxers books, they don't sell, but you don't get any shit for them. But with your Lee Duffy's, your Paul Sykes, um, Brian Cockrell's. You know, it's like people literally um, take the day off work, put out messages from all over the world, Canada, America, and they're like, wow, you know, some guy from Scotland messaged me saying I was going to kill myself, and that whole of the moon book really inspired me. Um, you know, and it's crazy. It's um, <clears throat> last couple of last couple of months, I had a message. This is how this is how much of a, sp a spotlight Middlesbrough's getting at the minute. I got a message from a guy. Um, and he said, where's the commercial pub in South Bank? And I was telling him and all that. And I just thought he was from like Stockton or, or Darlington somewhere. He went, oh, I'm going to come up and have a look around. And I was like, where are you from? And he was in Manchester. And then this other guy messaged me and he went, oh, where's Lee W. Bay? Where's, where did he live? Where was the, where he got shot and all that? And he said, I, I like looking at true crime. You know, I've done the craze and all this. And I was like, all right, okay. Yeah, I was telling him, where are you from? He went, I'm going to drive up from Kent. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, you know, people hold me account for it, but when I when Lee he was running about firing guns through taxi roofs and you know going to nightclubs knocking five doormen out, I was in primary school. It was nothing to do with me. Um, I I really watered them them books down. There was a lot of stuff. Obviously, I can't tell everyone what I spoke to, um, but I really spoke to everyone, and you know, I had I had many people phoning me up. And then he'd pass it to his mate, it was close to Duffy, and then, rah, rah, and, then, and then he'll pass it to him. And I thought, fuck you, you're not, put, you're not bullying me, you're not putting me off. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, it's. I, I've done the two books, I've done the documentary, there's going to be another documentary which is going to be made by guys around the, like the BBC. It's. Um, it's you know this 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 one is is going to be like a big one. And they asked me to do it, and they said, well, if you don't do it, we're still going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. So I said yes. You know, I mean, I've had I've had people asking me do I want to make Lee Duffy shirts, and I thought, I don't fuck. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it was still someone's dad. It was still someone's brother. Mm -hmm. I would never be that disrespectful. I had one team um, from a Ghost Hunters. Um, do you know what like them paranormal oh, yeah. asking me to take them around? Um, 
where he died, where the, you know, would I give him information, Ned try and I, I know out of respect for the family. Mm -hmm. So I haven't done a lot of things which I could have done, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a lot of things people have told me um, that I never used. I could have put in, I could have put, I've got them on record with permission and some of them were the first names you think of when you mention Lee Duffy, but I didn't do that and some, some things, some things just have to be buried forever, Alberto, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? I'm not interested in ruining anyone's life or... You know, disrespect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, um, it is. It's, it's sometimes it's quite unjust sometimes. And I, I read some of the stuff, and I think I'm only human. Do you know what I mean? And like, if only you knew. You know, like I've in all this. Obviously, he's never had any. He's never had any parts in anything I've ever did. Neil Booth, which was lead up his best friend, <clears throat> and I've had to respect that. Um, but he said to me, we've got become literally best friends, and he said to me, do you know, in like the 30 years, the best thing Lee Duffy ever gave me was you. Because um, he knows how respectful I've been, do you know what I mean, it's for the stuff I've had and been told and sat with the police for hours and what I've had ac access to, what I've dug, dug out in the forums and thought, I can't, can't let his kids read that. I can't let his ex read that, so I don't put it in, even though it would have been unbelievable, so I haven't. Um, when I did when I did the Paul Sykes books, I was supposed to be doing it with his sister, um, she come to stay at my house, I've been to stay with his wife a few times, um, I stayed with her for three days and I went back the year after and stayed with her, uh, really did my research, and when it got too much with Paul Sykes' sister, she, she asked, she wanted to pull away, which I fully understood, now I had 37 photos, of um, Paul Sykes, no one's ever seen, and I deleted them. Now my publishers to this day still say, "You off your fucking head," and I was like, I was into God, I was, you know, kind of, and I, but I did it. I deleted that, deleted them all, because being a decent person means more to me than, do you know what I mean? Like being mm -hmm. a, you know what I mean? It's like so. I have got um, morals, yeah, it? massive morals. Um, you know, I spoke to, you know, and I haven't took any book that. You know, I've met some really famous people and every day I'll get like, you know, I've sat down and I'd meet, I'd like Kevin Mitchell, the boxer, um, John L. Gardner, I was up to do his book, um, actors from Peaky Blinders, who else, um, footballers, um, you know, some, some probably wouldn't want me to name them, but, you know, and it's, it, so, but, you know, I do, I am starting to think, well, you know, this true crime, it, it is, it, I'll bet, why does true crime sell, why does Jack the Ripper sell? Why are people fascinated with Charles Manson? Why are people, you know, going Waterstones and uh, I never know how to pronounce his name. John Ra? Jin Ra? John Yeah. Yeah. Um, their most popular is true crime. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, everyone loves a good murder story. And, you know, with my books, Lee Duffy, it's a tragic harrowing tale of a young kid who... You know, I don't think there's nothing glamorous about the way Lee went about his business, but I, I don't think there's anything glamorous about a 26-year-old kid losing his life. Mm. And I remember when I was a kid and people would make jokes. When, when Lee Duffy, when he died, <clears throat> Middlesbrough had this black cloud over it. And I remember being in first year senior. I'd just gone. It was a funeral was September the 9th, so it must have been about the first week. And some of the kids in the playground were saying, what's his, what's Lee Duffy's favourite um, comedy? And they say, hello, hello. And, you know, I know people were drinking the Duffy's dead cocktails. This is a young kid. This is a young kid who, you know, I've got a friend called Graham Seed, which I put in the in the Luffy, Lee Duffy book. And he turned his life around and he's helped people in Stockton and Thornaby for 20, 24 years now. Um, and he didn't turn his life around until he was 32. So how do you know Lee Duffy might not have turned his life around? Mm. You know, what you've got to remember when people are giving him the abuse and all that. And yes, you know, he's gone. You know, his, his family is still suffering. They read it. But he was this and he was that. And I can't paper up the cracks. He was what he was. There's some there's some monstrous stories I never even put in the books. I didn't even want my name to be connected with stuff like that. Um, but do you know what? Um, he paid the ultimate price. And that's what, you know, he was a young kid. He died, he's, he's paid of his life, and in death, he achieved a lifetime of immortality. Um, you know, so people want to remember that, do you know what I mean? It's, 
because um, you know there was no coming back for him. Do you know what I mean? He, he might, uh, which he was. He was seeing a priest last three weeks before. I've seen the letter. Um, you know, a priest said he was a good guy. He just done a lot of bad things. He had a good heart, but he was drug ravaged at the end of his life. He was paranoid. People were out to kill him left, right, and centre. He'd had four attempts on it of his life, not the three that people think. Obviously, he was shot twice. He had the petrol and uh, the baseball bat of a gang the two weeks before he died. So, you know, they hadn't, they'd come to really do him in. Um, you know, so this was a guy who everywhere he went, people were out to kill him. Um, and I said it in the documentary, could you imagine if he'd have been ill? I mean, he'd have probably been killed 10 times, 20 times over now. But could you imagine if he'd been here with bullet holes all over him, going to schools, doing what Stephen Sears has done, doing what Brian Cockle's done? This is like the baddest guy in Britain. You know, I spoke to one guy, Dominic Negus, and he, uh, he was on a door in Essex once, <clears throat> about 1990, 1991. And uh, he, now bearing in mind that 50% of the population only had landlines, some kid went up to him on a door and said, I'm going to get Lee Duffy onto you. You know, so that was, what's Middlesbrough? Middlesbrough and Essex is about 270 miles away. Mm -hmm. So this is some guy getting threatened with some young kids in Middlesbrough. Um, so that's how big his name got. He was a, you know, everyone knew his name for what he was in, in Middlesbrough. Um, he had the town in fear and, you know, he was like the hurricane, if you like. And when he died, the town, you know, he just kind of had a bit of a come down. Uh, I'll never forget that feeling for the two weeks after he died. It was like, I was a young kid, but anywhere I went, paper shops and everywhere, everyone was talking about it. It's a feeling. Middlesbrough will never see the likes of that, um, a huge trial like that idea. Was there a big funeral for it? It was the biggest middle I've ever seen. Um, the people said, in the paper, the court on a thousand people there, but there was a thousand people by his, around his grave. Um, if you have a look on YouTube, um, there's footage that I've dug out personally um, from the news from like 1991. And you'd think it was like, you'd think it was Winston Churchill when you've seen like Ronnie Cray's funeral. Do you know what I mean? It was like the biggest middle I've ever seen. Um, someone said to me last year, I said, wouldn't it be nice if um, Middlesbrough come together and Luke Jobson, the young kid who unfortunately died at the start of last year, he was he was uh, murdered. Um, wouldn't it be nice if Middlesbrough made his the biggest funeral? Do you know, there was one one woman, um, she actually wanted to uh, get her body's, get her husband's body exhumed um, and because Lee Duffy was buried near him. Do you know what I mean? So that's how much, that's how much outrage this young kid caused. Um, but Middlesbrough, you know, whether people like it or not, it's, it's part of Middlesbrough's history. Um, last couple of years, I've spent a lot of time in London. <clears throat> uh, last year, I spent 12 days, and then the year before that, I spent seven days. So I, was, I had to walk around Stepney, Mile End, and uh, people, you know, like people are like, oh, don't you can't write books about Lee Duffy, you can't write books about Paul Sykes. Hang on a minute. I've spoken to people in East Bethlehem Green who couldn't stand the craze. Mm -hmm. But, you know, because Tom Hardy played the, the craze in the film, it's cool. You know, Lee Duffy's part of Middlesbrough's social history, whether people like that or not. And um, his death, it was an end of an era for Middlesbrough. Um, and, you know, someone like him, or even your Brian Cockrells, and your Sayers, and, you know, all the others. Your speedies and your, you know, it's it that belongs in a, um, it, it belongs. They're only they're like cowboys and Indians, and they belong in, It's part of a sort of because communities changed. Um, these days you get five years for carrying a gun without a bullet. Mm -hmm. So you know when back in thirty years ago they were carrying guns for fun and. Society's changed, too many cameras, um, so people like your Lee Duffy's and your Brian Cockrell's, uh, they're like the dinosaurs, do you know what I mean? You'd be shot straight away. Um, you know, it, I've, I've actually sat and spoke to people who were offered money, 100 grand, to kill Lee Duffy and had guns and were on the corner, and it's stuff like that, I'll, you know, so I have done it with respect, but, you know, I've done the two books, done a documentary, there's going to be one more. Uh, I wasn't sure about doing it or not because I'm done, you know, unless it was maybe one of his children or his siblings or one of his best friends like Neil Booth, which will never be done because he wouldn't do it. 
then I would never do another book again. I've done, as far as I'm concerned, it's done. Um, this company's got in touch with me regarding Lee Duffy. It's going to go ahead anyway, so I can do it respectful. Um, but I think it's only a matter of time before, you know, um, before his book, before his... I've actually spoke to a, a, um, a film producer, uh, a writer, film director last week. He's part of the Peaky Blinders and all that. And he said he's doing something for Stephen King at the minute, the actual the Stephen King. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to put him in this documentary. But... He's writing the Lee Duffy screenplay for the film, and he said, it's my passion is to get a film out with this young man, because whether you hated him, or whether you, you loved him, or whether you'll never forget him, and somebody like him, what he did in life in such a, a short space will never kind of, will never be repeated again. You know, it's, it, you know, it's, it's probably not a bad thing, but... You know, people, why, why did Jack the Ripper kill? Why did Charles Bronson? Why did Fred West do this? And what made Lee Duffy? You know, he was once a bullied little boy. And, you know, at the time, he had no money, he had no clothes, but all he had was that reputation. And there was no social media in them days. So when he was going into the town and knocking people out for fun, he was the talk of Middlesbrough. He was famous and he was addicted to that. You know, but it's tragic. It's a tragic and it's sad and it's, you know, you look at look at the lives, look at the, you know, um, some of the some of the characters I've had to even the books I've ever done. I've still sat and spoke to <clears throat> Chris Lambriano. He got fifteen years for accidentally walking into a house. The crazy had left. Um, Chris actually took me around the house and showed me where it all happened. And he said uh, that Reggie Craig killed Jack Pat McVitie, and Ronnie Bender opened the door, and. Uh, is Chris Lambriano, Tony's brother went, Chris, Tony Lambriano went, Chris's brother, he was there to see, and he said, don't leave me. So Chris got dragged into a murder, which had nothing to do with him. The craze wanted him to find the body on a train tracks, looked like an accident, but he got 15 years. And when Chris Lambriano had written his first book in 19, his only book in 1996, he, um, Reggie Cray was still up for parole, um, so he couldn't really be honest, do you know what I mean? Where even the Cray twins' father, not many people know this. Charlie Senior said to them, he said, you two are guilty, you're going down. Admit the guilt and them, or they can all go. And they said, no, said they're all coming down with us. Um, which is what they did. And obviously, Chris Lambiani got sentenced to 15 years as a 26-year-old, come out in his 40s for something. The, this day and age, what would he have got for that? One year, something maybe. Do you know what I mean? It's, he wasn't no part of it. He just got dragged in by the, the most notorious villains Britain's ever, do you know what I mean? And you know, it's um, it's a it's a story, isn't it? It's it's what it's um, it's what you know. Like people want to hear it because it's so <clears throat> in their mind and sort of like reliving it, isn't it. It is, and um, if anyone, you know, I defy anyone to say I glorify crime because I do not. Do you know, mm. Paul Sykes, um, he had an education, school teachers and university lecturers couldn't hold a torch to, but he died in the gutter. Kids used to literally piss on him. You know, and so everything does come back around on you. Um, you know, it's it, is, it has been trying at times. You know, what I mean, I don't mind it. I don't mind. I, I lost count of the amount of time people say, "Oh, you fat little see you next Tuesday." You know, but it gets it does get down sometimes. When like, oh, mention your wife and kids, and you're like, you know, and but it's life, isn't it? And you know, unless you be nobody, say nothing. And do nothing, and just be a mouse and hide for the rest of your life. People are always gonna, do you know what I mean? So ninety percent of the time, I can handle it. You've been through it yourself. You must have had times all better when you're like, do you know what? I'm sick of this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and um, I guess that because like, people really know where to hit you, and like a lot of them, they're bored. They've got nothing else to do, and like yeah. especially like us, like. I couldn't message back with someone for like okay, let's say ten minutes, but I've got something to be checking on next. But there's people who could just. No, no lies, nothing to do, and all they can do is text, 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 respond. And to be fair, you can never win to like you've got something going where a lot of them don't, so they've got nothing to lose. Mm. But whereas you have a reputation, like I feel like with you, like especially like what you've told me about the respectful side of you, it's, it's like the opposite. You know, that Michael Jackson documentary, yeah, they went into that just looking at the money, they knew it makes sales, and like you said, you've had stuff that you knew. I've had, I've had stuff that it would, uh. See, you know, people like 
like obviously Neil's never had any part of it, but people are, you know, around the people who respect. Listen, you know, the, the time, the first time you message me calling my wife abuse or messaging my kids, I have no respect for you. So mm -hmm. no matter how close you were with anything I ever do, I'm not interested. But, you know, I know the correct right ones. Um, and some of the stuff I've had on record, some of the, I mean, I've dug pictures out no one's ever seen. I've got another one, one or two coming. Um, and it's like, I mean, at the Paul Sykes, I dug footage up from Spine of Joe Fraser in 1973. My publishers were like, whoa, where did you get that from? Um, it's never been seen on television before. And, you know, I'm quite a nosy guy. You know, I'm probably not easily put off. Do you know what I mean? Which is like, if you, if you say to me, don't do a book on over there because it'll get you shot. I'll go over and stick my head in like a honey badger. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, so I probably do the books, but I've had some stuff where I thought, oh my God, if this gets out, I'm getting shot. Mm. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, uh, but then also the biggest thing is I don't want to upset. I've always been a man that when I write that, someone's kid might have to read that and I've, mm. I've watered it down and, you know, I've changed it, stuff and all that, and I've had stuff from names around, and you'd think people wouldn't have the no idea of the people I've been in contact with, and, and sat for hours, some people like solicitors, who, who told me Lee Duffy literally paid for his yacht, because he put that much crime to some work. Um, uh, God, people who worked in the courts, policemen, a top policeman I interviewed, and he was like the elite, the top of the tree. Um, obviously, I didn't use his name for it, but there was a lot of stuff he told me in there. He's, you know, um, like, ev like evidence, like um, stuff from back years ago, like people's work, you know, kind of books and, you know, yeah, un unbelievable stuff. But I thought, I'm not doing that. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so, yeah, I've got to sleep at night mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Do you know what I mean? And that, that's always my biggest thing. Um but yeah, it's um, it is. It, 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 you've just got to. I think with this game, you've got to do your books as respectful and honest and you know and it's decent possible. as possible, without pissing off as at least amount of people. And years ago, I could have been fighting every week. I used to bite, mm -hmm. you know, and I'd be like, right, are we then? You know, and I, where now I think the first day that I'd be game over. Do you know what I mean? The people video on me. Yeah, I'd be in the papers, yeah. and then it's as hard as it is. You just got to walk away because yeah. you know they, they, these are you know they're just they're happy to sell drugs and do you know what I mean and it's like in the spotlight public when you go in that spotlight as you know mm -hmm. um, you're there to be shot at and um, yeah, it's, it's you like, know like like if you look at everyone in the limelight especially when you look at them people with like millions of followers yeah, yeah. They, even if it's like your favorite artist like people who you absolutely love like look even like Ed Sheeran he's like Britain's golden boy. And even he gets hate from even like professionals who just wildly call him out. And it's like, if you have to be passionate about this thing and know what's coming, you know what I mean? Mm. That's one thing I tell to a lot of people because a lot of people want just the good out of everything. Was it hard bad. for you when you first started doing it? Yeah, for me, like. Did you ever think, I'm going to not do this? When I first started, I think that was the main only time I didn't, because obviously in high school, I didn't have all this good equipment. I would be recorded on a, on a Samsung. Yeah. So, and I didn't really have that creative mindset, but I just loved entertaining people. So I was funny, but when you first start doing anything and people see you do a little bit well, that jealousy comes in and people try to put you down. I was bullied. I was told I'm going to get nowhere. Like, it, it's just the little things, they just slowly break it down. In those times, I was like thinking I'm going to school to get bullied after I've uploaded a video. It's like, it's just your passion. You write books for passion. Mm. I create content for passion. So why does that involve anyone else? You know what I mean? And then I... The, the, I feel like for me there was a point where like it clicked in me sort of it's sort of good and bad <clears throat> so obviously I became a bit arrogant in the sense of like I would not look down on people but a lot of people here on me were doing nothing with their lives in it so yeah. I'm like you're hating on me but you're probably working 9 to 5 sick of your job no disrespect to 9 to 5 mm. but it's like why are you hating on me for doing something I enjoy I'm getting paid to do YouTube to travel across the country to do interviews I work with BBC mm. Channel 4 but you're hating on me, is it jealousy? Do you just not like me? And then I learned that no matter what you do, I've done videos where I've tried to be as nice as possible thinking there's no way someone could hate on me. <laughs> Absolutely no way. I could do a video about anti-bullying because I've got bullying. Oh, you're just doing this for attention. Oh, you're still this, you're still that. And then you get stuff from like 
just people will make up right like i've had people make up accounts of me the worst thing i think that's happening to me right now is when people because i'm like not big enough for me to have a blue tick so you know that's yeah. my account do you think but you'll I'm, get like that though hmm? do you think you'll yeah, get 100%, like that no two, no that, two ways yeah, i'm that yeah. confident in myself but there's people who make fake accounts of me and start messaging like little kids on yeah. your fit you're this as a joke but they don't understand this could have a serious effect on my career i've had lads message me oh why are you messaging um these little kids for why you message in my last time like that, they sent me a screenshot of the message I'm like that's not my account or oh, there's an extra I, I had one last week someone was uh my mate messaged me saying Jamie you should know that I've just had this message and I was like whoa and it's like well, how would you have the amount of time to make fake accounts and mm. you know it's um it is it's it is it's it defies belief but um I, I, yeah of course you question it do you know what I mean you think Jesus Christ. And I did. <clears throat> I've done 13 books, right? The worst one I got, Tales of Pugilism. It's all about boxing, me getting my nose broke, having it rebuilt. Um, it's all about just, you know, boxers telling their story. Why do the people get punched in the face for a living? So I did this book, right? I've been ripped to bits and I thought, I'm bulletproof here, right? Mm. This is for middle of the cancer ward. Mm. Um... And the worst, if you Google it now, if you go on because they're forums, and I was like, whoa, do you know what I mean? But someone said something the other day, and I thought that's quite true. Being hated is a new light. Do you mm. know what I mean? It, it um, is like, what, one of my friends, this this I don't like um, respect for this. I, I see what he's trying to do. So, you know that um, ITV presenter, Caroline Flack, who yeah. killed herself. So, my friend made a video um, saying, oh, he rang out she's dead and he was saying oh he rang and she answered didn't it so it was to get like the clout and it's sort of like he enjoys the hate and obviously when you're doing stuff like that that's disrespectful it's gonna affect a lot of people you can get a lot of hate but i feel like on the other side when you're doing something good and people are hating on you it sort of shows that you, you must be doing something right you know what i mean like mm -hmm. if you've done let's say you wrote a book just about your journey your story your life you're not perfect, you say the bad things you've done, the good things you've done, and people want to hit on you. That just shows that they care that much about you. You know, they're, they're basically a fan. Like mm. all of my haters are called fans because you don't you can block yeah. me. It's simple as a click of a button, block me, yeah. and never see me again. But they're there. <clears throat> Some the haters. I've got you know when you get them haters who you see the exact same name to him again. Yeah. They're your fans. You well well I mean? that guy you interviewed, Paul Venice, obviously, mm. but we were talking, he went to me, Jamie, so I'm not being funny, but <laughs> he said, I'll come everyone hates you and I was like so I was saying, where did you get this from? And I was like, I said, is it Pete from South Bank? No, I was like, yeah. I said, I said, I said do you know what? They haven't even met me. Do you know what I mean? And he's like, yeah, yeah, you're probably right. But um, it is, it's, it is, it's, it is unbelievable. And uh, I've done stuff exactly how you've done. And uh, this is, cannot get anything. Uh, last year, last year, I was on the Fort Nail booth and there was a car, car lads flew, flying about. And they stopped and they were staring at me. And I was on the phone and they were like, do you know what I'm Jamie Boyle? And I was like, and they were like, can being abrupt? And I was like, is that a good thing or a bad thing? And I thought, here we go. We're going to jump out baseball bats here. Um, and they were just like, you're a fucking legend, you mate. <laughs> so I was like, Whew. you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, yeah, it's, you know, I've had some bad things, but good. Th I've had a lot of nice things as well. Do you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I'm just... I, I think people realise that no one's perfect. They pick at your flaws, but like a lot of people who, like there was this one time I had this guy threatening to kill me, this, yeah. this, that. I went, all right. I posted on my Facebook, I went, this guy attacked me. I see uh, someone sent me a news article. He tried to burn his partner alive the other day. Oh, he was being done for messaging little kids, this, this, that. I'm like, you're not perfect either. And you're attacking me for making videos. So yeah. no one's perfect, you know what I mean? And then when you're in the limelight, you, it's... It's sort of, you, you can't escape it, no matter what. You can think you're doing the greatest thing. That everyone will have haters. And like one of my favourite artists, um, he's called Piles. He says, if you ain't got haters, you're not popping. Because when you look at it, all the big people have the haters. They have the most. And it's people, people are just evil, but like you can't get away with it. But one thing I rate about you is, with all that hate, you mm. still continue to do you. You know what I mean? Yeah. it's um... They couldn't make you stop. They couldn't. I had a stop by now, do you know what I mean? And it's like, if I look at Jesus, had 12 followers, Hitler had millions, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, yeah when you look at it, like do you know that. what I mean? And I, I have been, you know, it's like, I have read some arms, and you, you read the middle of the forums. There's one me and Paddy Maloney the other week, 
and I said to Paddy, I said it was called Come on Borough or something. It's just spoiling Maloney. And uh, there was 931 comments. And I said to Paddy, I said, at least we're the most, well, I, don't, I think I was hated. They were naming all these, our fat Danny Dyer wannabe, naming all these Middlesbrough hard cases. He wants to be friends with him. And I thought, I don't know him, I don't know him, I don't know him, and I don't want to know him. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I'm just, it's just about work for me. And if I can put a book in, listen, at the end of the day, right, if, if, if you, you've got to really ask yourself, would you go out and buy a doctor or a nurse's book? You know, yes, there are, there are amazing people who should be on footballers' wages, but, you know, people, uh, you know, the books I've flopped have been the boxing books. When I write books about headbangers, some mental bastards, mm -hmm. people just go absolutely crazy for them. Mm -hmm. And people think, oh, so where's your money going? And I'm like, hang on a minute. I've just took me three months to write that book. You know, I'll tell you what, you're a barber. Come around my house and cut my hair for free. Oh, you've got a shop. I want to come in your shop and eat for free. Writing books is probably the only profession that people want a book for free. Even if they're not going to read it, they just think it's just for free. Do you know what I mean? And it's, um, yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, yeah, but, you know, it's not going to stop. I had a stop by now. I'm, uh, I'm 40 in April and... I've got a plan, a long-term plan. You know, it's, and what have I got now, 13 books out? It's, unless, you know. Do you have a target you're going for, or? I'm just looking for some wood to touch. Uh, um, no, do, do you know what, I'd like to do 100 books. I've got 13, Steve, I'm doing 14 at the minute. Um, you know, so, as long as God spares me, I'll just write and write and write. Mm. Um, because I like to meet interesting people. I was I slept rough about three and a half years ago in Edinburgh, and uh, I missed the train, got drunk and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had the pocket full of money and all that. I could have went to hotels and that. And uh, I, I just spent the night hanging around with the tramps. Do you know what I mean? So I always like the underdog in life. Mm -hmm. um, and it's you know it's, if if there was a a millionaire there or some tramp, I'd probably be. Um, I like the, I'd probably be, li you know, linked to the, to some, you know, I, I meet, you know, it's mad mental people are really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, <laughs> Do you know like, what I mean? It's people like, people love watching like psycho drama, <clears throat> all the, like, if you look at like on Netflix, the main documentaries like the big hits are the ones with like people who were psycho. I'm going to send you tonight, right? right? If anyone, it's because Paul Sykes, I've become roast the famous Paul Sykes, if you like, mm -hmm. but, um, the full thing was on YouTube, but because of uh, my books have been signed to be a film, ITV have got wind of it. They know they can charge £400 per second, so they took it off. So I've got a link. Well, it's Paul Sykes Daily Motion. If you click on that, type it on Google, you can watch the full documentary. And you watch that and you'll think, my God. You know, um, in one of the books, I think it was talked about FBI, one of the study, Paul Sykes, and they said, he's a genius and a madman, a, um, a psychopath in equal measures. Mm -hmm. There's like a thin line between genius and a madman. Mm -hmm. And when I send you tonight, Alberto, you'll watch it. And the first five or six minutes, you'll just go, wow, who the hell is that guy? Mm -hmm. And that's what drew me in. Do you know what I mean? It's like Steve Ray started writing books because he was right to the craze. Mm -hmm. Steve walked into the book, walked into the documentary became friends with everyone, and obviously he's, he's done well. So he's, you know, and I've kind of did that with Paul Sykes. Um, you know, I've kind of dug him up back, if you like, and that, you know, people are selling T-shirts now, which I would never do. Um, people are selling mugs. Ah, oh, there's so many things I could have done, but I never did. I've just done the books. The film's going to happen. I would have done a documentary, but the film, Western Edge Pictures are doing the Paul Sykes film and the documentary, so I... I'm legally, I'm tired, I can't do that. Uh, otherwise, I would have all been done by now. But, um, it's you know, it's just interesting. And, and you think, how the hell, you know, how did that man become from that? A bullied little boy and this monster. And then when the millennium struck midnight, it was like Cinderella. And this man turned from this big monster who terrorised Wakefield, who was the most dangerous prisoner in Britain, to this tramp who was living on the streets and, and could hardly walk, and you're like, my God, do you know what I mean? It's such a powerful journey. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you just wonder, and everyone's got a story. It just so happens that the mad 
the mad crazy it's, it's what know, we like to hear ludicrous about. people uh, you know it's as I said I mean I read footballers books I read boxers books I read true crime books but would I go and read a book about a cricketer no I wouldn't no. you know what I mean it's like yeah. do you know what I mean it's like a solicitor's book you wouldn't really want to read that do you know what I mean? I mean, maybe some would, but maybe the um, it, well, it, the it, Kardashians it, one got OJ. Yeah, uh, you know, maybe that one at a push. You know, serial killers. People are fascinated. Robert Mordy's been in the press a lot this week. Mm. He's um, at his Netflix and all that, and you know, it's. Uh, I don't think I could probably ever not do true crime because the demand is too great. And mm. at the end of the day, if there wasn't people in the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands out there reading them, you know, I've done books where. It's sold a dozen and it's flopped. Mm. I've done books where it's done a hundred and then I've books where it's done tens of thousands. Mm. You know, so it's hard to really, really sell books. But what yeah when I did that book years ago, the boxing book, uh, no one really gives a shit about me, and that's just a fact. Mm. People want to know about your your Brian Cockrells or your the Cray twins, your Charlie Richardsons and mm. You know, all this kind of thing and what made them tick, what made them go from that person, the psychological understanding, do you know what I mean? It's not glorifying it at all. Um there's nothing to glor you know, a, a lot a lot of their a lot of their stories are just you wouldn't if you wouldn't have it given to you. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And a lot of them are bullied and life in prison and shot and killed and murdered and you, you know, but it sells, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and um that's that. Yeah, so anyways, I just want to say a big thank you to Jamie Boyle once Absolute again. Pleasure, yeah. my, my guy, yeah. Get this um, one right now. Yeah, yeah, you know, we'll get this one right. This one will be uploaded. But guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. I'm going to put the links to the books he has out in the comment section below. He's going to be sending me, which book is it? Uh, Brian Cockrell, resi re Residential of Brian Cockrell, comes out on paperback. The Mars. Resurrection of... March yeah. the 31st. It's on the Kindle now, £4.95. Yeah. But you're going to get a copy. All right, so I'm going to do a review and on a that. Documentary. And also, we're going to try and get Brian back and his wife because they're getting married and I, you're going to be there. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to be filming the wedding? Are you all yeah, right? yeah. I'm going to be filming the wedding. Um, get um, Big up Lexi, who's going to come help me do that. She's a professional and great friend. And yeah, just keep checking him out. This guy, yeah. I'm not going to say too much, but... Just watch him. If you love true crime, if you love all the crazy stuff, yeah, this guy's where it's at, my G.